everybody, it's the coach. This is Madden Football on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we'll see the most valuable player of 2018, Patrick Mahomes, and the Kansas City Chiefs as they match up with the longtime Raven Joe Flacco and his new team, the Denver Broncos. With that, we're off to the Rocky Mountain. Standing by in Denver, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. EA Sports coverage of the NFL has us at the foot of the Rockies, just west of downtown Denver at Empower Field at Mile High. A moment ago, through a shower of pyrotechnics, it was the hometown Broncos taking the field as they get set to do battle with the Kansas City Chiefs. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis, happy to be with you. And Charles, we've got two teams who know each other extremely well. These division games, they tend to be battles. People scout like crazy in this league, but no one scouts more than within the division. Because if you win your division, you're automatically in the playoffs. That puts an extra emphasis on these games, and they can't wait to get at each other. will kick here's Brandon McManus to start us and we are off from Denver this is fielded a couple yards deep and all that work but he stopped where he ultimately would have been and he simply taken a knee and that's the 25 yard line reigning AFC offensive player of the month Patrick Mahomes bringing out the Kansas City Chiefs but the Chiefs lost in week five to Indianapolis, a shocker at home. Their first defeat of the season, 4-1 and one now the Chiefs stand after that 19-13 loss to Indianapolis. Getting back to Mahomes, though, I mentioned AFC Offensive Player of the Month for September, looking to be the first repeat MVP since Peyton Manning back in 03 and 04. But he had his struggles on that Sunday night against Indianapolis. 22-39, 321 yards, one touchdown. Good numbers for most players, but maybe not for Patrick Mahomes as this offense scored their fewest points in any game that Mahomes has started in his young career. Mahomes dropping one to Williams here. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. That goes for a Chiefs first down, 14 yards. Quarterback Patrick Mahomes has some fond memories of playing here in Denver. In fact, one of his earliest NFL memories came here in the Mile High City. It was back in the final week of the 2017 season while Alex Smith was resting up for the playoffs. And we got a glimpse of what the young Mahomes could do. He threw for 284 yards in a 27-24 Chiefs victory. That, of course, was the first start of the career for Patrick Mahomes. the pickup of four here's second and six on the counter here's Williams Adam Gatsis the big Aussie in on the tackle and a look now at how the Broncos line up defensively outside linebacker Bradley Chubb was selected fifth overall in 2018 by the Broncos because they expected him to be an immediate impact player and that's exactly what they got he broke the Broncos' rookie sack record, formerly held by Rulon Jones and Von Miller. A nickel set defensively for the Broncos here on third down. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. And he's got the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 49. They're able to convert with a gain of four. Defense had a chance to get off the field here on the opening drive, couldn't do it. I know that we go into these meetings with coaches and sometimes maybe we can get, you know, a little bit numb because they're always going to talk about how important third down is, aren't they? Offense and defense. In this case, one capitalized and the other, as you said, had a chance to get off the field and didn't get it done. Show a first and 10 now in Denver territory at the 49-yard line. From the gun, it's a run for Williams. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. 
Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. The last run got six, now second and four. Now they'll throw with Mahomes. It's Kelsey on the ground. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. I don't believe that this opening drive is surprising to either one of us after the time we spent with the coaching staff and players prior to the game. What about you? Absolutely. Not only that, but that big article in this paper this morning about their philosophy on starting games like you're shot out of a cannon, and that's what they've done. Very methodical here on this first drive. Yeah, so many teams talk about that fast start. We're actually seeing it happen right here in front of us. But now the kicker. Can they cap it off by putting the ball in the end zone? It'll be a pickup of 16 and a Chiefs first down. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front and linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense, because someone's going to run for some big yardage. Yellow, yellow! I'm the wolf, lady. Come on, come on. Okay. Mahomes now on first down. Escaping the pressure right. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. They brought the blitz that time, and I thought they were going to get to him, but instead, he flipped it on its ear and ended up picking up positive yardage. I thought he was dead to rights, but you are exactly correct, sir, able to turn that into a positive game. On second down, it's Williams. And he'll get about three just outside the 10, stopped at the 11. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments and doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. This will be play number nine coming up on this relatively long opening drive as they look to convert on third down. Williams. Well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. I saw Von Miller in college at Texas A&M, and all I kept hearing about was his speed off the edge to the quarterback. But what impressed me, his balance and his ability to take on blocks and be a force in the run game, as we just saw there. So on fourth down, the home's off. Harrison Butker on for the Chiefs' field goal. And Butker able to put this one through. And the Chiefs are out to a 3-0 lead. Butker, what a pickup he's been for Kansas City the last two years. Remember, he was drafted by Carolina to be the eventual successor to Graham Gano. That didn't pan out. Casey got him as a free agent. He's been really good. Yeah, Gano said, oh, no, I'm keeping my <laughs> job. But Butker found his home in Kansas City, a franchise record for points scored in his first two seasons. After the field goal, here's Butker to kick it away. This is taken at his four. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Denver Broncos offense trots onto the field. Joe Flacco, their quarterback. And in week five, Broncos got their first victory of the year, defeating the Chargers 20-13 to to get to 1-4. And, and you think about Flacco, all those years as the Ravens starter, 11 years in Baltimore, 106 wins, including the playoffs during his time there. Now he has his first win as a Denver Bronco on the road in L.A. against the Chargers, as I said, in week five. And Flacco, the numbers in that game, 14 of 20, 182 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. And the numbers on the season, not that great. The totals, six touchdowns and four interceptions for the veteran Flacco. Now the first carry here for Phillip Lindsay. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. And yeah, let's look quickly here at the Denver offense. And how about Phillip Lindsay's rookie season? Began the year third on the depth chart. 
finished it in the Pro Bowl. Not bad for an unrestricted free agent out of Colorado with speed to burn. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. From the gun, Flacco. He's got Jake Butt, his tight end. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses because when you can have that type of a game in the middle of the defense, it hurts them in so many ways because most teams like to be strong down the middle. And if you can sting them there, that opened things up for you on the outside as well. But that's where he, their big tight end, is so good, that middle third, the seam routes, the in routes. Yeah, you're right. Probably see more of that. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage and fortitude to go in the middle as well. <laughs> and he's got it. Now a play fake here on first down. And nearly picked it off. He had a chance to come down with that in the end zone, but it'll wind up just being incomplete. And let's take a look at the defensive striders for Kansas City. Tyron Matthews' instincts as a defensive back, I believe, are second to none. And that allows him to play all over the secondary. He can line up as an outside corner, inside in the slot, and that's difficult to do because you get so much traffic in there. And then, of course, they can also move him back as a safety. Anywhere you put him, though, you know he's going to end up around the football. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. <laughs> Flacco leaves to Lindsay on the draw, and he'll take it across the 50 and into Chief territory. Call it a gain of four, and it'll leave him with a third down and six to go. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Third down, Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. And that's knocked away and incomplete. I think we'll see more of them trying to get him the football out of the backfield. They love what he can do in open space, and they believe that he creates mismatches they can exploit. Second-year punter Colby Wadman out there now for the Broncos. Tyreek Hill back deep for Kansas City. He'll send this away into the Rocky Mountain night, and it's a good one. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12-yard line. The Broncos defense getting ready to go. And despite being down on the scoreboard, this unit, they've had some big-time hits. Sort of like us at practice the other day. <laughs> I saw you take a run and start at that blocking sled. You took it down. <laughs> Bounced off like a rubber band. No, no, not at all. But you're exactly right. They are doing their job, but they want to add takeaways to it. You need to have more of those to go along with the big hits we're seeing. By the way, when I tried that and I bounced back, I noticed that you laughed with everyone else. You, did, you didn't try to get in my corner. No, no, no. Someone had just told me a joke on the other yeah, side. Right, I missed right. that. Totally missed it. Mahomes will lead the Chiefs up first and 10 at their own 12-yard line. Here's a guy on his fourth franchise in two years, Carlos Hyde. And he'll be taken down at the 18. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Well, that's a guy, Carlos Hyde, who split time last year in Cleveland and Jacksonville after four seasons in San Fran. He was just under 1,000 yards his last two seasons with the Niners, but never really got into a groove last season. And then the Chiefs signed him to a one-year deal back on March 9th. Let's go, defenses. Get off the field, defense. On second down and four, Mahomes. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Damian Williams, the man he was looking for. And it's third and four. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, as it turned out. Couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It was way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. They run the counter. It's Williams, and he's going to be taken down here still a couple yards short of the first. Just a gain of two there, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. But forget knowing where the first down line was. 
This defense created their own line of scrimmage. They won every battle up front. And a lot of times that is one-on-one. -on -one. And if you win your one-on-ones enough times, your defense is going to be pretty good. They have more people to the football and snuffed out the play. On fourth down, on is Dustin Colquitt to kick this away. River Craycraft deep for Denver. That's taken on the 25. Well, that'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10. Broncos take the field again here to get the football back. 20-13 to 13 win over L.A. in Week 5. We talked about that earlier in the broadcast. And that broke a streak of eight straight losses dating back to a season ago. 12-25 and 25 this franchise is in the last three years. But at least they got that win to get to 1-4, and four, snap the losing streak, and now they come home for two games. They'll face the Titans in Week 6, and then a tough one as the Chiefs come to town in Week 7. The drive will commence with a run by Lindsey. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play caller to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. Bootleg, Flacco. And he's taken down, a Chiefs sack. Frank Clark fighting his way home to get the sack. Defensive end gets in there that time. They were in a 4-3. What's the responsibility of the ends versus the tackles there, Charles? Well, most of the time, when you talk about the ends, they're your pass rushers. They're, they're the guys that you turn loose to try and get to the guy who's going to throw the football. The tackles, usually more of the run-stuffing variety. But the way this game is advanced, you're wanting a little bit of everything out of all of your guys. But let's just go ahead and break it down and make it simple. The guy who's the right defensive end versus a right-handed quarterback, that's the blind side. He's going after the quarterback. He's going to put him on the ground. Now after the sack, Flacco and the Broncos come up third and long. Third down, Flacco from the gun. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off around the 41, and they will take over possession of the football at their 42-yard line. Oh, man, Brandon, not a real good throw that time. It looked like he tried to put a little too much air under this one, and it turned into a floater. And defensively, this is a dream. He could have fair caught that one. That was way too easy. Last year's MVP, Patrick Mahomes, leading the Chiefs for their next possession. So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10. So after the INT, here's Mahomes. And this is caught by Watkins. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a Chiefs first down. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. So they go from one 42-yard line to the other as they come up now first and 10. Shotgun snap to Mahomes. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Now here's Mahomes. This is caught by Robinson. 
Well, last year, Chris Conley was the third option at receiver for Kansas City. He shipped off to Jacksonville. Now they're hoping that Robinson can help fill that void. And Andy Reid has said that he and Mahomes are developing a great rapport, hoping to improve upon the 22 times they connected last season. The last play on the completion got them half of what they needed. Now here's a tough third and five. Now Mahomes. And this is caught by Watkins. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 24-yard line. That's a pretty good throw on the curl route there. Third down, and they pick up a first. Defense should be aware for that, right? They should be aware, but it was so hard sometimes. Yeah, it's not easy. Because <laughs> when, they, when they sell that route really well, you think they're going upfield, then they curl back, show their numbers to the quarterback, and complete the play. Right here. Right side. 51. Mike's 51. Right here. That's what, that's what I'm doing. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. And he'll get it down inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going, and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. And he's eating up at the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard down to the 16. But we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. on the bootleg it's complete to Williams that he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12 go, go, go. they have the first down with that gain of four yards and a good quarterback facing zone coverage if he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene that's what's going to happen no doubt about it if there's no pressure He's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. Many teams, as soon as they spot man defense, if they haven't called a hitch, they'll get to it as fast as they can. They want to put the ball in the hands of one of their best playmakers and hope that he can break a tackle on the outside and go for big yardage. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Throwing now is Mahomes. And it's caught. And he takes this into the end zone for a Chiefs touchdown. A seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Chiefs are able to extend their lead. The defense is doing their best, but they're struggling right now. They'll look for some help from their own offense to keep them in the game. Harrison Bunker is on for the extra point. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. And the Broncos have it. The big fella. He's at the 50. The 30. 20. But he will not be able to bring this one back in the extra point attempt. Unsuccessful. You and I have not met a coaching staff yet that likes to coach negative situations. You know, even plant that in their head. But you have to work on what happens if you get an extra point blocked because now they can pick it up and return it for two points. Yeah. You have to go over that. Nice job to get back there and make the tackle, preventing them from getting all the way. Shine 
Now he's back out there to boom this one away, maybe with some frustration after the PAT miss. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And Denver getting set to take the field. And this is a unit that, to be frank, doesn't look like they've woken up yet. I mean, a punt and a turnover on their first two drives. And I think the game's starting to take shape a little bit now. And I'm going to take it into the basketball world. When you're having trouble scoring or moving the ball in basketball, what do they do? Get it to their best player, right? Find a matchup, create it, exploit it, and try and move the football. Flacco going to bring up the Broncos first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll start on the ground with Lindsey. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. And that's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. On second down, a run with Lindsey. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 12 yards there and a first down. Couple of very nice carries to start this drive out. Yeah, two first downs. And how about that second one? What a nice run on that particular play. I'm telling you, they're going to start to think that this game is easy if they continue to rip off yardage like this. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Operating out of the gun. That's complete to Jake Butt. A gain of six there on first. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six-foot, six-inch target. It is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge 6'6 target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. And three yards there takes him to the 45. And that's some good tackling there to keep him short of that yellow line. Yeah, and defensively, all I'm thinking is that on that play, get me to third down. Get me into a position where I can make one more play and get my defense off the field. Now on third down, an extra DB out there for the Chiefs. They'll try and run for it with Lindsey. And brought down, but not before he was able to break the tackle, and the extra effort moves the sticks. Give him the third down conversion, five yards on the play. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. This yes. offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Flacco from midfield. Now a hit, and Flacco drops the football. It's loose. But it looked like, fortunately, the Broncos able to recover. On plays like this, when the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is a quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. Flacco on the give to Lindsey. Chris Jones on the stop. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat? And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. To pass, Flacco. And he fires one that's intercepted. Darren Lee picks it. The 20. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. 
He is a difference maker at the linebacker position. He had a pick six last year, remember it? But it's different for those guys, isn't it, than a corner or a safety? It certainly is because sometimes they're pattern reading, seeing what the receivers are doing. Sometimes they're spot dropping, just getting to a place on the field and finding the quarterback and going to the ball. But remember this, these linebackers, at one time in their life, a lot of them were running backs. And they love having the ball back in their hands and making big moves towards the end zone. Butker on for the PAT. And he atones for his miss the first time around as this one is up and good to extend their lead. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. They're sort of seeing themselves spiral out of control. Let's see if they can get things back on track. And this is where the coach is walking that line of being calm and really being firm with his team. I had one tell me once, you know, we were having a tough patch. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. And finally, we kept having a rough patch. He said, but you got to do something <laughs> to make it pass. And that's what they have to do. They've got to get some control back, get themselves reasserted, and calm things down. See if they can get calm and reassert themselves here. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Charles, he doesn't seem to be particularly in tune with his receivers. Just two for seven throwing the football, but he did seem really locked in before the game. Yeah, and that has to do with receivers sometimes. Sometimes the defenders knock them off their route, and you're usually pretty precise. One, two, three, cut, balls out of his hands to the receiver. In this case, might be off by half step either way. They've got to find a way to get back in sync. A big gainer there on the catch and run, 37 Here yards. Here we go. Here we go. For an offense that has not found the end zone yet, that's a big play. There's the spark right there. The big play that they needed, now they've got to go ahead and finish this drive and put this ball in the end zone. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield to the 40 now for first and 10. Flacco. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked off near the 26. So that is three interceptions now in this first half, and you hate to ask the question, but you know, let's be honest, we're thinking about it. Do you need to go in a different direction next series? Potentially. We know that he's probably not going to be on the Pro Bowl ballot. That's not really his stature here. But he has been their starting quarterback for this game. So they've got to weigh things about who's behind him. Do they think he can snap it back into gear? Maybe change up the play calling to help him out a little bit. The Chiefs offense about set to begin this drive. Go. Go. On 
first and ten. Here's Mahomes. That's complete to Williams out of the backfield. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get them out in the flat, and let them have a chance to make people miss an open field. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. They'll run out of the gun here. Williams. He finds an opening past the 40. That one good for 33 and a first. Got to give a nod of appreciation to some of those guys up front over on that left side. Several key blocks sprung him. No appreciation for the guys from the backside that didn't allow any leakage and any, anybody could run uh, him down from the nah, backside. They're, they're at the kids' table. Okay, so so front side guys, good yeah. backside guys. Man, that, that's what you're supposed to do. I've had better. Okay, either Hello. way, worked out quite well, didn't it? A nice Come sizable in. gain. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. On the ground, this is Williams. They'll fight forward for a couple down inside the 40. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second down, Williams. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 11 yards there, first down. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. And this defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. now on first down and this will be incomplete physical play on the football there and it's second down you get a tight end like this and you know he's used to dishing out punishment but here he's one that has to absorb the contact and as a result unable to hold on to the football so now they'll come up on second and ten once again from the 28 off the draw here's Williams and they've got it in the red zone now, down at about the 19. And he'll be down close to the first down marker as he gets this to the Broncos' 19-yard line. A oh, lot to praise on this drive, obviously. I, I know you're seeing what I'm seeing. Those guys up front, they're getting it done. Doesn't matter what play is called. They are handling their business at the line of scrimmage and dominating right now on this drive. On third down, Thompson. And he's going to have a first down here as he gets this one to the 17-yard line. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. First down, a run with high. And he'll take it from the 18 to the 15. A gain of three. Well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game. And while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so? Because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game. On second down now. It's Williams, and he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. The tackle made that time by Bryce Callahan. His carries tonight, they're getting up there, so maybe one of those every now and then is understandable. I would agree with that. Understandable every now and then. Sometimes you come back and you fake it to him and go play action, but other times you say, okay, they got him on that one. We'll come back to him in another carry. And Williams is in. Touchdown, Kansas City. 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Chiefs are able to extend their lead. 
CD, it seemed like they were so focused on the guys out wide, they forgot about him out of the backfield. That's a really good point because you've got to communicate, and oftentimes when you start counting receivers, that's exactly what you do. You start from the widest receiver, work your way inside. Who gets lost sometimes? The back in the backfield. That's exactly what happened there. And he got into the end zone. The extra point splits the uprights, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive, and it's capped off with a Kansas City touchdown. After the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. And Denver getting set to take the field. And some dangerous territory. You're already down three scores. A three and out here or an inability to put any points up. This one might be over by half. Yeah, and what you also have to guard against is calling every play for a big shot downfield. You know, thinking you're going to get all these points back on one drive. You're not. And last time I looked, it's still the first half. I'm not saying you have ultimate patience here, but you also don't have to go ahead and force everything either. Flacco going to bring up the Broncos first and 10 at their own 23. On first and 10, it's Lindsey. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Broncos first down. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. On first down, right back to Lindsey. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. And this is why aggressive defense coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. We remind you that coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will be alongside. He'll have highlights and analysis from Orlando of this first half of action. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. That time, Juan Thornhill, the rookie from Virginia, batting it away. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. Seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home, and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync, only way to play good defense. Got a man, he finds Sanders. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Broncos first down. The sixth season in Denver now for Emmanuel Sanders after those four years in Pittsburgh. And you may recall, Sanders tore his Achilles December 5th last year in practice. But before the injury, he was on his way to another 1,000-yard season. Would have been his fourth in his first five years in a Bronco uniform. Now at 32 years of age as he tries to return to full speed. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield, incomplete. And attempted a deep ball there. They didn't get it. But, boy, they're going to need a few of those to actually hit in order to get back into this game. Good thing they do have a little bit of time here still left in the contest. Decent-sized deficit, but not one that they can't manage. Let's go. Let's bring it. Let's bring it. 
Incomplete on first down. Now Flacco on second. And that one almost intercepted. Far too loose with the football here. Nearly a fourth pick. And it's third down. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they're in completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. Flacco will take to the air again. He's got a man. It's Sutton that's complete. And he'll be brought down with a first down as the tackle's made at the Chiefs 42. All right, let's just go ahead and walk through this one pretty easily, right? Blast off the line of scrimmage, get downfield to a certain point, usually around 8 to 10 yards, turn around and make sure the quarterback sees your numbers and set yourself up for the pass. A well-executed curl route by Charles Davis. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. First and 10 with Flacco. He completes this to Sutton. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. That throw good for four. It's second down. Timing is everything, and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this time it paid off for them. Worked him to the center of the field, cut it to the outside, ball's delivered, gets both feet down for the completion. To throw again on second down. Flacco, open man, and again it's Sutton. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. Seven yards there and a first down. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. And again it's Flacco to throw. He'll take a shot for the end zone. And incomplete, he dropped it in the end zone. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and ten. Actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up second and ten. Once more, it's Flacco. He's got Jake Butt as tight end. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. The Broncos on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This time it's third and three. They go pass again with Flacco. He'll find Lindsey here. The Chiefs now going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. So on fourth down, on comes Brandon McManus and the field goal unit for the Broncos. It's a 39-yard attempt right hash. And McManus able to put it through, and that'll get this back down to a 20-point spread. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13-play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal. You did a nice job there. But here's the other part. 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes. You don't take the ball away. Maybe that's the way they should look at it. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. 
and he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Damian Williams and the Chiefs ready to begin their next drive. He's in his own second quarter, already closing in on a 100-yard game. And that's the magic number for a running back. Anytime you get to that triple digits, that's all you're looking for. But he's got a chance to really exceed that in this one. Yeah, he does. That, that's been the gold standard for a long time, hasn't it, that 100-yard mark? It really has, and that never has to shift because it's in a game. It's a thousand yard mark. I'm wondering since we've gone from 12 to 14 to 16 games. Maybe we need to up that a little. Mahomes going to pull it out and keep it himself. Open man is Hill. He's got it. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game. And it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. And this is caught by Watkins. Get ready, get ready. So we've reached halftime with the visiting Chiefs on top. As we send you on out to our studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one is maybe not exactly in the bag yet, but there is definitely a big mountain to climb in this third quarter. The teams are already back out there, so let's not waste any time as we'll turn it back over to Brandon Godden. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is fielded at the goal line. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Now Joe Flacco in the offense heading back out onto the field. And he's looking to take much better care of the football here in half two after three first half interceptions. We don't have to just look strictly at the numbers here. You know what else happens to a team when you turn it over three times like that? It erodes confidence in you. And it erodes confidence in the offense. And now you have the defensive guys looking over and saying, what is going on here? And instead of playing for the team, they're playing angry and mad at their teammates. Flacco going to bring up the Broncos first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Flacco looks to throw. The tight end butt takes in the short throw. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 17 yards on the catch and run. It's a first down. Nice job, nice patience right there. Put him on the right side, let him work his way across, put the ball in his hands, and let him work his way upfield with a catch. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Shotgun snap and a give to Lindsey. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That one going for a gain of 11 and a Bronco first down. That's pretty much mean potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at him and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all. Challenging that defense. And on that go around, the offense won the challenge. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. From the gun, Flacco. And his throw here is incomplete. He was looking for Tim Patrick that time, but it'll be second down. 
Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Here's Flacco. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Flacco from the gun. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. The Broncos send out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds. And they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. The field position game, such an overlooked facet, Charles, of an NFL game. But this offense, they're going to be pinned back. What an ideal punt. An ideal punt, and it leads to that term complimentary football. Because them doing that puts their defense in a great spot, doesn't it? Gives them a chance. If they want to be aggressive, try and maybe get a safety out of this whole thing, it puts them in that position. The Chiefs offense about set to begin this drive. They have the lead here. Well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches. What are halftime speeches like? For the most part, not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, though, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, let's take control right away. Yeah, Defense, we got the lead. Yeah. We've got, de we got, the, got the lead. Defense, don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and score and give us more of a cushion in the game. Check so far. Defense shut them down. Let's see what the offense gets go, go. done. Mahomes now 13 of 16 throwing the football. It's first and 10. Looking right side, and that's complete to Watkins. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. That throw good for four. It's second down. Second and six, Mahomes, his throw incomplete. Travis Kelsey, the all-pro tight end, the intended receiver. And it'll bring up third down. This defense tried to do its part, active hands on that play, but their offense hasn't given them much to work with. So they're not going to worry about it. On their side of the ball, all they're concerned about, can they create some scoring opportunities and help out that offense? Throwing is Mahomes on third. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. Derek Wolf popping in for the sack. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Here's Dustin Colquitt now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt, and possession will switch hands first and 10. 
Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. First and 10 here for Flacco. It's caught by Sanders. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. The Bronco first down there, 12 yards on the play. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. Flacco now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and 10. The pass there complete to Sutton, and he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 17 yards for the Broncos there as they've got themselves a first down. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Now it's Freeman. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. But no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. A good run, got seven on first. Here's second and three. A run with Lindsey out of the gun. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. Continues to be a struggle for this offense and this home crowd. They're growing a little restless here in the second half. And I think they've just got to look at how they're trying to move the football. Yeah, you want to run it, but maybe you spread it out, maybe some swing passes that can take the place of runs and give you a little more space. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Flacco. And the throw there going to be incomplete. This has kind of been the story all night long, hasn't it? An inability to really get much done on third downs, and it's costing them. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. And that will wind up just short. He had it online, it ran out of gas at the end, and this score will stay right where it is. So awfully close that time, but his kick's going to come up short by about the length of the football. Yeah, Brandon, he got a little help from the mile-high air, but that one just didn't quite get there. Here's the Kansas City offense now as they get set to take over. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Well, now they'll start three yards shy of midfield after that long 57-yard miss. On first down, Mahomes. It's Williams on the catch. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. Give him 30 yards there. 
A lot of running backs in the passing game, they're just used to check it down to them or maybe dump off passes. But this guy, they use him to stretch the field, don't they? He stretched it right there, turned it into a really nice game. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Working from the gun, Mahomes. Over the middle, he's got Watkins. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable. And you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say. Play action. Yeah, without a doubt. I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. Yellow. On the low, ladies. Let's go, defense. Our time. It's our time. Tighten up. Tighten up. Tighten up. The busy night continues for Williams. Yeah, Williams is going to be stopped short of the yellow line. He did not get there. Nothing doing on second and third down after that nine-yard gain on first. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. A 32-yard attempt. Butker's kick here is good. And that lead will move from 20 up now to 23. So unable to convert for the touchdown inside the red zone, but they do come away with three. Yeah, it's a 32-yarder. That's essentially... An extra point nowadays, right? Because it's 33 as a general rule for these guys. So it should be a simple kick. But you know what's really strange nowadays? When they miss an extra point, I think they carry that with them longer than missing a field goal because an extra point's supposed to be automatic. Absolutely, and I would think even field goals inside of 30 yards, even though they're substantially shorter than a PAT, it, it just has a different feel, doesn't a it? A different feel, a different vibe. That's what I get from all the kickers I talk to. They always say, if I miss an extra point, that's the one that bothers me more. This is taken at the three. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Now this Broncos offensive unit ready to head back out onto the field. And they've got to be a little bit frustrated about that last drive. Missed field goal. Always hurts a team because, you know, you've put something out there. You've given yourself a chance. You're in range, and the ball doesn't go through the post. But it's not something to panic about, I don't believe. Just keep playing and keep going. Flacco going to bring up the Broncos first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Now a carry for Lindsey. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. But if these guys are going to chop into that deficit, they got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage would be found. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Here's Flacco. He'll let this go deep for Sutton. And that will be incomplete. Try to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. 
This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Operating out of the gun, Flacco. Got a man, he finds Sanders. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. 17 yards for the Broncos there as they've got themselves a first down. Nice catch right there. Brings to mind the sentence, when in doubt, find your veterans. He used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You, know, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this. When he was young, he thought the crafty veteran was simply a guy who couldn't run yeah, anymore. Right. Now he understands a little bit better. Check, check, check. Yes. They'll run on first down. Lindsey. Pushing forward for three up to the 48. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Here's Flacco off the play fake to Lindsey. Rush coming, and he's taken down. So one quick, easy analysis about why they've struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. Now after the sack, Flacco and the Broncos come up third and long. Third and long for Joe Flacco. This one complete to the running back, Lindsey. And he stopped at the 44. It's also a gain of four, and now it's fourth down. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. The Broncos send out their punter now as he's on here to punt it away. And he puts a little something extra into this one. By far his best of the night. And problems spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. Here's Damian Williams making his way back out. And we have seen a decline in the numbers. Where does the fault lie? Just him, maybe the guys up front combination? Well, as you and I both know, it's almost always a collective deal. But in this case, I think maybe the offensive line got a little overconfident. They had blocked so well in the first half, picked up on what the defense was doing. I think we've seen an adjustment now that they have not picked up on, and now they're being a little bit overwhelmed. The Chiefs offense about set to begin this drive. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. The best way to do it, touchdowns up at the 29 now they'll head to the line second and a yard Williams not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30 in on the tackle the former all pro Chris Harris well they had that one sniffed out excellent run blitz stopped that one for a short game what makes a good run blitz a good run blitz the ability to stay on task to follow up your assignment go to the gap you're supposed to cover and not be deterred by anything else they run it again with Williams. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. Just a gain of a couple, but good enough to keep the drive rolling. And that last carry puts him right at 100 yards for the game. So how has he done it? Because he's been patient. Followed his blocks, let everything develop, and then burst through for big gains.
from the 32 now. Here's first and 10. From the gun, it's Mahomes. That's complete to Williams out of the backfield. And he's out of bounds, but not before a big pickup that time on what's going to wind up being the final play of the third quarter. Welcome back now to Denver. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. Mahomes now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. Mahomes going to pull it out and keep it himself. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Barreling in for the sack, Shelby Harris. Well, you don't usually get a sack from a nose tackle spot, but we got one there. No, we don't, and a lot of the times in passing situations, they end up off the field anyway. So how happy was he to work his way back to the quarterback and put him on the ground? He's going to have to put a nickname after something like that, some big jelly or something like that. <laughs> To the sack, things get a little tougher here. Third and long for Mahomes and the Chiefs. On play action, it's Mahomes. And going deep for Hill. And that's caught inside the 30. It'll go as an impressive 31-yard gain. Boy, another big play late here for an offense, Charles. It certainly has had its fair share of big plays. Coverage has been a problem all game long. And I would say that going along with that has been confidence. Because even if they had the right coverage, they've still dented them. And now it's been a real issue for them during this game. So now then, the big play has them all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. They run high. Todd Davis, the Broncos' leading tackler last year, up to make the stop. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they won't put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Now Mahomes. Blitz coming, and down he goes. But enough takes to start to have a good drive, quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? No, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. After the sack, things get a little tougher here. Third and long for Mahomes and the Chiefs. Now carry number 20 of the game. Here's Williams. And he'll get this to the 23, but that'll be well short of what he needed. They'll get 11, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. They had quite a hole to dig out of there on third and long. Not able to get the first, but a pretty good size run. A really good run. But how much confidence do you have in your next play call that you can sell to the head coach? Let's go get it on fourth down. Do you really have a play you believe in? Or are you just hopeful? And you've got to sell it to the big man before it gets called. And the kick by Butker is good. And that will make the lead now 26. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points, but this widens it out, as you said, and now it's all about ball control, isn't it?
After the field goal, here's Butker to kick it away. This fielded at the two. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Here we go. And Denver getting set to take the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. Flacco going to bring up the Broncos first and 10 at their own 26. To pass, Flacco. Incomplete. Just nothing there again. He's been sacked multiple times. We've seen the interceptions, of course. Uh, he's really been through the ringer, hasn't he? And what we've seen is a defense that's well-coordinated. The front and the back really in sync. The front putting on the pressure. The backside being ball hawks and picking passes off. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. 11 yards there, first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now it's Flacco. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Flacco's throw there, complete. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. 15 yards on the play, first down. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right, safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. So now first and 10 in Chiefs territory at the 48-yard line. They'll try the draw, Lindsey. And boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again, second and 10. Now Flacco. And his throw is incomplete. Emmanuel Sanders, the intended receiver. And it's third down. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game. And to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is emboldened a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. An incomplete pass on second down. It muddles things a little bit here. This is third and 10. Finding the open man, and that's Tim Patrick. And he'll be brought down with a first down as the tackle's made at the Chiefs' 32-yard line. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Yeah. 
Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. And again, it's Flacco to throw. And the Chiefs are going to get him. Flying in to blow that play up, Alex Okafor. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. First down, a bit of a disaster, and now on second and goal, back even further. Now Flacco. And that is caught. Touchdown, Denver. Noah Fant there to make the grab. And the Broncos cut into that lead. Well, that's what I call an answer right there. They gave up a sack on the previous play. How about what they did to finish things off, turning it right back around? That's the response, and that O-line feels a lot better now, don't they? Yeah, without a doubt, because give up the sack in the previous play, that just hurts those guys, because they never want to see their guy get hit. On here, Brandon McManus for the point after. And that'll make this a 19-point game. A 10-play drive that time, and it culminates in a touchdown by the Broncos. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Damian Williams and the Chiefs ready to begin their next drive. He has been a factor in a multitude of ways. Over 100 yards rushing. He's approaching that number in the receiving category, too. And you know why I've always respected guys who can have these types of games? As a runner, you're going through a pile. People are raking at the football all the time. Your hands take a beating, okay? And to be able to still go out and catch the football in open field after going through that... That guy's dynamite. He's been dynamite in this game so far. We'll see defensively if they have an answer because they need to come up with something. They start the drive on the ground. It's Williams. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. It's Kareem Jackson making the play defensively. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go larga. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. And they'll get nine there as that sets them up better for third down. Was not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take what you can get situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. The last catch nearly got him a first, but it did not. And they'll try to convert on third and inches. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? 
burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. And this is caught by Watkins. No gain there on the completion, second and ten. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. I don't need to. I don't need to. I'm going to What we got? What we got? What we got? <laughs> Mahomes going to pull it out and keep it himself. That's complete to Robinson. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. An effective seven-yard third down conversion. Well, I don't think there's any question, Brandon, at this stage, the stop troops, the defensive guys, they've got to use their three timeouts here. They've got to stop them and get the ball back. Yeah, if you're in that two to three score deficit window that they're in now, you got to get it ASAP. Yeah, no doubt about it. Stop them, use your timeouts. Easier to move the ball on offense without timeouts than to stop them on defense without using them. I'm here all day. I'm here all day. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop, but that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything, so it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Chiefs in possession of the ball as we welcome you back. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. On second down, it's Williams. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of a yard that time, but now from the spot, actually no gain. So third and long. Ninth play of the drive coming up, and certainly not an easy one on third and long. Third down, Carlos Hyde. And he can only manage to take this thing to the 38, well shy of the first down. It's a six-yard gain, and it leaves him looking at a fourth down. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. That's leaking to the right, and he missed it by a foot or two. It's no good, and this score will stay right where it is. Distance was never an issue, not in this mile-high air, but it doesn't matter what elevation you're at if you don't put it on target, and this one kind of takes off on it. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in a game like this and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And a coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. 
And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Another incompletion. You know, it's a wonder he's still moving around back there the number of times he's been sacked. Yeah, he's staying out there, isn't he? And you don't think about it much in a game like this, but he's showing incredible leadership. Still competing, still fighting, not taking himself out of a ball game that appears lost. Flacco to throw again on second down. And this is going to be caught. He won the fight for the football. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. From the gun, Flacco. He's got Jake Butt as tight end. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as they get it with 16 seconds remaining on the clock. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. They go pass again with Flacco. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. Now the Broncos will use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. seconds remaining. Nice job by Juan Thornhill there to get a hand in and break up the play. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Flacco will take to the air again. And that is incomplete. Two seconds left on the clock. Brings up a third down and ten yards to go. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. One last gasp for Flacco. And that will be incomplete. They were going for a consolation TD, but it was not to be. And time has run out now on this game. So this one in the win column for Kansas City, and maybe more importantly, a victory in the division, which always helps. And on the road. How about all of that rolled up into one? Because how often do you see division games get decided by this much of a margin? Yeah, Most they time, thumped them. Yeah, they jumped all over them. And a division game is usually a touchdown or less because these two teams know each other better than most teams in the league. In this case, that didn't hold up. On the road, big margin, big victory. Oh yeah, that flight home will be good. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. From Denver, good night everybody.